Now that we've discussed the overview of the Lock Manager app case study, let's start our discussion of the server side structure and functionality. This particular part of the lesson is going to show the structure and functionality of the controller class for the Lock Manager microservice that we developed using Spring Web MVC. We'll come back and talk about the Lock Manager service in an upcoming part. The Lock Manager controller maps incoming HTTP POST requests to endpoint handler methods. And this, of course, is, is always what a controller does in conjunction with other parts of Spring. You can see the interface for the Lock Manager controller that's shown down here, and we'll walk through different bits and pieces of this momentarily. As usual, we put the at rest controller annotation on this class to ensure that Spring can map the incoming HTTP POST request to the appropriate request handling methods and also be able to automatically serialize return objects into HTTP response objects so that it can handle those things without us having to do that explicitly. As usual, again, we also auto wire the service. So in this case, we're going to use auto wired and the auto wired annotation in order to indicate that the controller should be connected to the lock manager service without us having to do any explicit coding of constructor logic or initialization. There's a number of different methods that are defined here in the controller. We have the create method, the acquire method, and the release method. And there's actually a couple of variants of acquire and release. The methods that we have here are all just going to end up forwarding to the underlying lock manager service methods that actually fulfill the client requests. As you see here, we use the post mapping annotation to indicate that these endpoint handler methods are going to handle incoming post requests. We'll talk a bit more about some of the differences between post and get in just a moment. But be aware that we're just only using posts in this example, and that's because all the methods here, all the things we see here, are updating the state of the server. You can read more about this if you take a look at this link down below that talks about HTTP GET versus POST and when to use each of the different variants. These are the route strings that are used to demultiplex incoming HTTP POST requests to the appropriate endpoint handler method. And those, of course, are defined in a constants file. These are the string constants, so we don't have to hard code anything with string literals, which is a bad idea for all kinds of obvious reasons. Hopefully we've discussed many times now. Now here's one of the things that's different from an HTTP GET request versus a POST request. With the GET request, everything goes in the URI portion of the URL. In contrast with POST requests, there's actually content that's sent in the body of the POST request. And using the at request body annotation is an instruction to Spring to map the one and only HTTP request body to the Java object, in this case, to a lock. Now, remember, there's only ever one request body per endpoint handler method, whereas you can have multiple request params, which are going to be traveling with the get request, or the sorry, the post request URL, the URI portion of the post request. We define what we want to get as part of that portion of the post request by using the at request param annotations, which indicate to Spring to use the magic of Java reflection to extract various query parameters, form parameters, or even files from an HTTP request. So you can see we're kind of mixing and matching. Sometimes we're using request param, and in the case down here of release, we're using request body. Remember, there can only be one request body annotation per endpoint handler method. We're using a new type here that we haven't talked about before called deferred result. And this is a Java class that's part of Spring that enables the microservice that we're implementing, the lock manager application, and in particular, the lock manager service, to generate and return a result using a background thread that's chosen by the service. And we're going to look and see how that works here in a second. Remember, just as a quick note, this only affects the server side behavior, not the client side behavior. So let's take a quick look at how this might work. So 
This is a little snapshot of what the acquire method looks like in the lock manager controller. And this is going to acquire a lock and it's going to use Spring's deferred result mechanism to accomplish this. And what this means is the following. First of all, the lock manager controller's acquire method, in other words, this implementation, will run in an HTTP worker thread, as I show here in the visualization on the right-hand side of the slide. So this code is going to run in a thread from the pool of threads. And that's a limited pool, so we don't want to tie it up for too long. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a deferred result, as shown here, to help offload the longer running acquire service implementation from the HTTP worker thread where the request came in on to the microservice and have it run in a background virtual thread. And I'll show you how that works in just a bit. What we then do in the context of the controller acquire method is we're going to create a new callback object. As we'll see later, callback is an interface that we define, it's a user-defined interface, and we're going to override its on success and on error hook methods and arrange to have those set the result, either the result if things succeed, if we get a lock, or if things go wrong, we're gonna set the throwable or the exception, and this will then be used to trigger the server to send that result back to the client. Until that point, a result is not sent back. We're then going to go ahead and call the acquire method on the service, which we have auto-wired together with our controller. And what will happen here, and we'll see this when we look at the service implementation here shortly in the next part of this lesson, that acquire method will actually run in a virtual thread. So that method and the associated callback that we're passing in from here will run in a virtual thread, and that virtual thread will then be decoupled from the worker thread. And the worker thread is actually going to be able to return the deferred result immediately back to the part of the server portion of Spring that dispatched it. And then that worker thread can be recycled. In other words, that thread can be reused for some other incoming request from a client after the controller's acquire method returns. In the background, however, this virtual thread that we created when we called it the acquire method on the service will run the request in the background and then deliver the results through the callback that we have initialized here and passed in to acquire. So this is what is known as the deferred result mechanism or the async mechanism that's built into Spring and Spring Web MVC. So that's the end of part one of this discussion of server structure and functionality, which just focused on the controller we will take a longer view through the service because there's a lot more fun and interesting things going on there momentarily.